Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's episode number 133, and I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, our midweek time together. This obviously is the podcast for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting, hear about knives, uh, stories, and product drops in the news. We get to uh, go deep with some knives in Bob's collection during the state of the collection. And of course, we always uh, promo uh, what's on Thursday Night Knives tomorrow, if you're listening to this when it comes out on Wednesday as well as uh, the next week's podcast interview. So, Bob, a lot of great stuff coming up in this show. We've got a couple of new patrons we're going to uh, recognize and thank. Also going to promote the Knife Town Hall show and sell. A lot of things in Knife Life News we want to talk about. Hinderer, Benchmade, uh, Laren Thomas has a new book, as well as uh, Master Bladesmith Bob Kramer uh, teaming up with Scotty Pippen on uh, a chef knife. So, uh, a lot of stuff there to talk about, a full show again this week. Yeah, that's right. Every time we come uh, to make this show, I'm like, oh, what are we going to talk about this time? And uh, man, there's there's never a dearth of knife news and just interesting things I want to talk about yeah. with knives. So, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, anyway, so I wanted to thank uh, two new patrons this week, uh, Barefoot130 and The Knife Whisperer, a good friend of the show, Joe Frazier, The Knife Whisperer. Uh, he signed up to be a tactical junkie. Uh, so thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so the knife whisperer and barefoot 130, uh, stickers will be, uh, on the way. They're in the mail. At least, uh, knife whisperer in the mail. Right. Barefoot, yours are coming soon. All right. Well, yeah, the, uh, knife junkie Patreon, you can learn more about that at the knife junkie.com slash Patreon, the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. Three different levels to, uh, help support the show, the, uh, podcast, the, uh, Thursday night knife show, the town halls that we do, all that kind of good stuff. And we truly do appreciate the, the support. Uh, and, uh, we welcome you to the crowd. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Thank you guys. Yeah. And if you, uh, if you join at the uh, $10 gentleman junkie level, you're obviously entered into the monthly knife giveaway that the, uh, the, uh, What's your name? The Knife Junkie? <laughs> that the Knife Junkie will be doing on a monthly basis. So uh, any level of support is appreciated. I've been honing in on uh, on what the knife this time is going to be for the giveaway. And mm. I have decided what it is. I w- I'm about to make the purchase. And it's on a, it's, it's on a slightly different vibe. Mm. Uh, and you'll all understand why. But everyone should have at least one of these in the house. So... Uh, yeah, I'll I'll announce it when it's in hand. We'll announce that later. So a little something yeah. to look I'll, forward I'll, to. I'll give you a hint. Jim has one. All right, let's move on. Ooh, and you know, folks, I don't have many knives, so uh, that's right. What so you just have to be? pour over the back episode to figure it out. All right, hey, uh, while we're uh, doing blatant self promotion, let's uh, talk about the Knife Town Hall Show and Sell Edition, Saturday, August eighth at twelve noon. Your chance to uh, hear from knife makers and manufacturers about what they've got going on and uh, ask them questions and uh, just have a great old time. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, that's coming up August 8th, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be in the um, in the usual town hall format video, numerous guests and conversation and and your opportunity to talk to knife makers, ask them questions. Uh, But this time uh, we're adding the sell component to it. So the Guests who are coming on, uh, some might not have anything to sell, uh, but most will. And uh, this is going to be the weekend of, uh, well, the canceled blade show. So right. we figured people might have some knives to sell. It, how great would it be to uh, not only engage the public, this is for the knife maker, and for the public to engage the knife maker and, uh, and you know, maybe buy a knife at the same time. Right. If, you have, uh, if you have that blade show mad money in your wallet that you were going to take the blade show, uh, you know, you might be able to see what you like on the show and, and buy it right there. Well, uh, I'll ask you in just a second to uh, give off a couple of names of the early birds who've already uh, registered to join in. But if you are obviously a uh, knife maker or a knife manufacturer and you'd like to uh, get on the show, I have about a 15, 20 minute block of time to show off your wares and uh, uh, talk to Bob about your knife designs, your knife company. 
Uh, hopefully, folks will be joining in live on the conversation, maybe even asking you questions. Shoot Bob an email at bob at com. That's bob at com to uh, arrange your slot. Or you could call the uh, listener line at 724-466-4487 to reserve your time. Bob, who are some of the early birds uh, already in on the show? Well, some good friends of the show. We have Andrew Demko and Marianne uh, Halpern from uh, TRM. So, so Andrew Demko's got the hot new 8020 out. And you know that uh, Three Rivers Manufacturing uh, has the Atom and the Nerd and these other knives that are so such in high demand. So uh, this is actually a good opportunity uh, opportunity to come on and get a knife that you probably have a, tr- a hard time getting right now. Mm. Uh, I, for instance, would love to have the TRM Atom. And, uh, you know, good luck finding one. So uh, this could be an opportunity to do so, uh, depending on what Marianne brings on. Uh, and like I said, Andrew Demko, also an old friend of the show, and uh, he's been on some of our um, town halls. And his AD20 is also not that easy to find these days. So uh, you might might have good luck there. We also have David C. Anderson of Nordsmith Knives and the Knife Center coming on, also a good friend of the show. And new friend of the show, Sanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives. He will be on too. And uh, man, if, if you're familiar with their knives, uh, we re- uh, recently had an interview with him and I just kept talking about that XLC, that XLC I want so badly. So an opportunity to check out some of their new knives too. They have some collaborations, a uh, new one with Jerry McGinnis. They have a collaboration with Peter Carey, uh, as well as all the all the beautiful Ray Laconico designs and, and such. So great opportunity to uh, to show up and even if no one else answers that's uh that's at least three quality hours of knife talk and, right. and uh, <laughs> so uh there will be more right uh, i asked tashi again and this time he's traveling back from some vacation uh what a cool guy uh so next time we'll, we'll get him on and uh yeah so stay tuned more uh names will be announced shortly. yeah well, in that uh, interview with uh, Sanford Owen of Monterey Bay Knives will be coming out on Sunday, August the 9th, the day after the uh, Knife Town Hall show and sell. So uh, get to see some of his wares and then hear a full, more full in-depth interview with him on uh, Sunday, August 9th. So a lot of good stuff coming up. So again, if you are a uh, knife maker at any level, a uh, knife manufacturing company, please, we'd love to have you on. You're already planning to be at Blade Show anyway. So why not take 20 minutes out of your time on that Saturday, August 8th, and uh, join the Knife Town Hall Show and Sell Edition. Show off some of your wares, even as Bob said, even if you are are, are behind on your books and don't have anything uh, to offer for sale, we would love to have you come on and just have a conversation, show off some of your designs, uh, talk to the knife community, that kind of thing. Saturday, August 8th, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, uh, you'll find the uh, uh, the broadcast. Live on YouTube and the Knife Junkies Facebook page of the KnifeJunkie.com slash Facebook and the KnifeJunkie.com slash YouTube. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Back on the Knife Junkie podcast, uh, time for our Knife Life News segment where we uh, get to take a look at some of the new product drops and things going on in the knife world. Uh, several stories uh, this time, Bob. Uh, Hinderer XM Slippy gets the vintage treatment? Yes, indeed. So um, uh, Rick Hinderer Knives has a whole line of knives, uh, XMs mostly, XM18s and 24s, that are uh, done up in their uh, vintage dress. And what that means is walnut stock, uh, walnut scales, walnut wood scales, and 012 uh, tool steel that's been parkerized. And the idea is that uh, this is supposed to sort of emulate the look of vintage firearms like World War II, like M1 Garands and and uh, the M1 carbines and those kind of rifles that had the beautiful walnut stocks and the and the and the tool steel, you know, that was uh, blued or parkerized uh, to uh, to weather the elements. And uh, it's a really cool look. I, I really like it. I do not have any of the vintage series. Um, Here's if if you wanna if you wanna hear a, a little bit of nitpick from me, I always thought the walnut stocks, uh, or I should say, the walnut scales on these vintage series hinderers would look really great with the traditional hinderer uh, texture milled into them. Now I don't know, I'm no woodworker. I don't know if that would mean getting uh, a fake kind of wood 
And uh, I don't know if you could actually do that in Walnut, but uh, I always thought that would be cool. And it, it, it might inspire me uh, to buy one of those uh, vintage series knives. But anyway, the, the slip joint, the XM Slippy, came out a couple of years ago, 2017, and it's a three inch slip joint. Uh, that looks very similar to, uh, and it, it's definitely in the XM uh, series from the way it looks. Now, uh, unlike a slip joint, there is a stop pin in there, so it's a, a little bit more robust, as you might expect from a hinderer. And uh, I got to say, in, in this dress, in the vintage dress, it really makes this XM slippy make sense to me. It is beautiful. I've seen a number of our friends online, like Alex has one. And he's done it up in, in brass, uh, hardware. And man, it just looks like a piece of kit from World War II. It's beautiful. I'm looking at the picture on, uh, Knife News. And when I first look at, obviously the first thing that gets my attention is the handle. And I think, oh, that's a steak knife because I have steak knives with that kind of handle. So, yeah. 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 And a cool thing. If you look at the knife, uh, you see on the back of the blade, it has that, uh, thumb disc. Well, that thumb disc is set in a slot, so you can move the disc. I was going to ask you about that, yeah. And you can kind of position it where you want along that one-inch uh, slot on the blade. And uh, for for your size hand and thumb, you can open this slip joint up one-handed. Or if you're somewhere where you're not allowed to have that or you just don't like that feature, you can remove it altogether. That's, that's what I would do, I think. I would make this a two-hander. And I know I've asked you about that thumb disc before. That's the purpose of the little thumb disc is to be able to open it with one hand. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, and so, you know, in, in an attempt to make this more legal in more places, uh, they have made that option, the one handed option optional. So you can take it off, you know, All right. an optional option. Exactly. All right. Well, let's move on to Benchmade, a new unlimited, limited edition. Infidel? Yes. So an unlimited limited is when they say, okay, for the next year, we're going to make as many of these as demand uh, requires. Mm -hmm. And then after that year, we'll be done. And uh, this, this knife will go up in value. Gotcha. Okay. And they're doing that with the Infidel, which came out, uh, as the name might suggest, about 13 years ago or so, mm -hmm. you know, right in the thick of all the wars. Right. Infidel was kind of a, uh, I think it was a thumbing, thumbing the nose at the enemy kind of naming. Uh, it's a double edged out the front four inch bladed beauty. Uh, it's got the, uh, opening mechanism lever thing that you push with your thumb on the, uh, show side of the knife as opposed to the, the spine side of the handle. Uh, usually that's where most out the front knives position it there. So, uh, to have it in this different spot was a, was definitely a, a unique selling proposition for this knife, but also, it being called the Infidel, it looking so good and having such a great reputation. Uh, it's, it's just been going for 13 years and it has no, uh, you know, looks like it's not going to slow down so much so that they're doing this unlimited limited. And that is, uh, it's going to be anodized in that bench made blue that you yes. see on their boxes. My favorite <laughs> color. Yeah, exactly. I'll have to get you one of these for your upcoming birthday. Just kidding because it's 525 bucks. Oh, and come on, Bob. Aren't I working? You know, hey, <laughs> hey, but but they did take it from D2 to S30V, and yes, you are worth it. Thank of you. Of course, yeah. Of course. Yeah. I, I, you know, if if I could, I'd be like uh, Ben Affleck and like buy you a motorcycle every time we do a podcast. Like, thanks, man. I'd be like problem. Oprah. You get a knife. You get a knife. You get a knife. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this this limited unlimited is in the Benchmade blue. It's with the with the black blade, the S30V, and I I kind of snickered when I said, oh well, at least they took it up to S30V. You know, not a big deal. S30V is a great steal, but at this point, not much of a selling point. Uh, but the interesting thing to me is that in pure Benchmade character, it's coming out at an exorbitant price, 525 bucks to me. Is, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I know it's a precision made American out the front uh, automatic, but man, that's a lot of money, uh, for a Benchmade. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you like it, there it is. They'll they'll be making them all year until the year is done, and then uh, and then it is a uh, a collector's edition, and even more than five hundred twenty five bucks. Well, hopefully, yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully for the collector's market, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would imagine that the the people who actually get these really actually love the knife and want it in its variations, and that I I really get. So, uh, 
we have talked to this gentleman that we're going to talk about here in just a second, uh, way back in the early days. I'll have to uh, look and get the number while you're uh, bloviating about his new book. But uh, Laren Thomas, uh, definitely a knife steel nerd, has got a new book called Knife Engineering. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? There's not much bloviation for me to do because when he was on here, uh, I would ask him questions and then the answers I was not prepared for because uh, <laughs> what that, he say? that man <laughs> that man knows an awful lot about steel. Uh, but if you know Knife Steel Nerds, uh, the blog, it is a it is the repository for, um, you know, knife steel research information and and all sorts of testing and uh um, opinions and but not not so much opinions it's more like scientific data right. this uh this uh blog is just thick 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 with uh with information and in reading some of the uh information about what led to this book uh Laren was saying you know the website has gotten huge there are over 270,000 words on the website and and he he was also mentioning his own reading habits and how he really absorbs things better off of paper and out of books. I I uh, I I feel the same way and many people might feel that way. He says, you know, when he's looking at information like this online on a screen, he tends to skim more and doesn't absorb, so he figured he would take these 108 articles and, you know, put them into a a book that people can really digest. It's called Knife Engineering, Steel, Heat Treating and Geometry. I mean, there it is right there. What what could be more elemental to knife making? And actually, uh, I'm looking at the cover of the book right now, Jim, and it's a it's a very handsome cover. It's, it's inspiring. It makes me want to pick it up and start making knives. But uh, Laren Thomas, a uh, very, very interesting guy that really, God, does he know his steel. And, and uh, when we spoke to him over a year ago, he was working on a, a steel all his own. So um, uh, interesting. It would be interesting to check back in with him. And talk a little bit about this book. Well, and I think you are uh, in the process of trying to work that out. So uh, hopefully we can get him back on because uh, it was way back on episode 13. Lucky 13. 13. Oh, my gosh. And this is episode number 133. So definitely time for Laren Thomas from Knife Steel Nerds to come back yeah. on and uh, not only give us an update just about Knife Steel Nerds, uh, Knife Steels, uh, since you and definitely I are at least a little more educated on knife steel nerds. Yeah. Don't think we're, we're 120 episodes more educated. Right. <laughs> that, that, I don't know where that puts me, but definitely not in the caliber of uh, of Laren. <laughs> but uh, at least maybe we well, could uh, hold a little more decent of a conversation. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely uh, get Laren to talk about his new book and all that kind of good stuff. So again, if you want to listen to that uh, episode, that was back on number 13, theknifejunkie dot com slash 13. All right, uh, wrapping up. Uh, Knife Life News, uh, Master Bladesmith, Bob Kramer, we want to talk about with uh, NBA legend Scotty Pippen have something going on with a chef's knife. Yeah, I thought this was interesting. Uh, Bob Kramer is uh, is a, a renowned uh, knife maker, especially with chef's knives and, and, and uh, culinary knives, and he's legendary among legendary chefs. And uh, he recently, uh, he just did a... Um, a collaboration with Scotty Pippen, uh, and it's a, uh, a, a civil rights based, uh, BLM chef's knife, BLM themed chef's knife. I just thought it was interesting because here Bob Kramer was able to, uh, to team up with someone to, to make a special project. He was able to take his, his very unique skills in, in making Damascus and also in patterning and, uh, and engraving steel and, and the handles. And he was able to make this really uh, exquisite looking knife and it definitely uh, means a lot to him and to Scotty Pippen. Uh, and it's a, it's a knife that's going to be auctioned off and the money that comes from this knife will go to, uh, an organization called Color of Change. And I just thought it was interesting. You know, we, uh, we, we talk about knives in politics a bit here. It's usually like, oh, wow, look at this knife law. Look at that knife law. It's interesting to see people. Uh, who have a love for knives? Scotty Pippen apparently has a love for, a love of knives, which is an interesting um, hobby that is spread across, incidentally, the entertainment and sports industry, which is kind of interesting. And uh, he was able to team up with this legend Bob Kramer and do something meaningful to him, you know, in the in the uh, in the shape of a knife, sell it off, and make money for a cause that he that he believes in. I thought that was pretty cool. Right. Yeah. And uh, 
Scotty Pippen, uh, Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, all those guys from the, the day back when the Bulls were were the team, man. That was my team. I loved the yeah, Chicago Bulls. Back all the day. pictures behind you. If you can see Jim right now, he's got – I don't know if Scotty Pippen is behind you. No, I'm a, Mike, I'm a Michael Bulls. Jordan man. All right. All right. <laughs> well, I just thought that was cool, you know, taking uh, uh, the craft of knife making and uh, turning it towards something more meaningful to you. you Absolutely. Know? Yeah, and I know the uh, the knife auction is open. I'm not quite sure when it's going to close, uh, but uh, you can uh, follow. We'll have links to all this uh, on the uh, Knife Junkies uh, website in the show notes at theknifejunkie.com slash 133, theknifejunkie.com slash 133. We'll have a link to the story, of course, as well as uh, uh, Bob Kramer Knives and Scotty Pippen sites it's where you can uh, follow along as well as the color of change. Uh, find uh, the auction and uh, if you're interested uh, bid on that for the uh, for the great cause and again good point bob about uh, knives often being politicized in a bad way and this yeah. is uh, definitely a, a story of uh, a knife that can hopefully make a difference you know in a small way yeah and now that we're caught up with knife life news let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast all right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 133. Again, if you have a uh, question or comment, or if you are a knife maker or knife designer or knife manufacturer that would like to get in on the Knife Town Hall show and sell edition on August 8th, give us a call at 724-466-4487 and reserve your time slot free of charge. No charge to you. Just come on and uh, hawk your wares, man, or just uh, tell us about your uh, your knife venture and what you've got going on, even if you don't have anything available for sale at the moment, or you can shoot Bob an email at Bob at the knife junkie.com. Right. Bob, I don't know, man, new my car to handles XM 18 Warney, uh, most carried knives of last two weeks is your Spartan Harsey folder. Yeah, are we going to talk about that again? Okay. <laughs> uh, Spidey, Just shelf. Update. <laughs> Spidey Shelf, some work being done by Mike Emler. Uh, you also want some new knives. You have built your knife-throwing, axe-throwing target. You need some throwing knives. Where in the world are we going to start with all this? All right, all right, all right. So I, I will keep this to a minimum. You see four bullet points in front of you, all equally important. Uh, so let me just uh, start with the new micarta handles for my Emerson CQC-13, the oh. beautiful classic Bowie uh, that uh, Emerson makes. I've wanted uh, micarta scales for these, uh, for this for a long time, and I've always wondered why you can't just search micarta scales for Emerson and like have a bunch pop up, because it seems like something a lot of Emerson lovers might like. So in looking, I found Blades and Such, Tom Engelson on uh, Instagram, and uh, he makes beautiful micarta scales and G10 and others uh, and other types, but uh, what really caught my eye was the micarta for Emerson's, ZT's, Hinderer's, and Les George knives. In looking at the quality of his work and really liking it online, I sent him uh, my 13, asked for natural canvas micarta handles, and uh, he's he just started doing this beautiful crosshatch knurling in his micarta handle scales. I had him add that, and um, in a flash, I swear it was like two weeks, it came back to me, and uh, it has to it totally reinvigorated my love uh, for this knife, and um, I just... It, it it not only looks better, but it, in hand, it really it really feels great. So this guy does great work. Check out Blades and Such. That's Blades underscore N underscore Such. His name is Tom on Instagram. If you're interested in getting uh, my car to handle scales or any other or, or G10 or other materials right. uh, for your Emerson, your Hinderer, your ZT, or your Les George knife. Right. Awesome work. Well, we'll uh, include a uh, link, uh, obviously, to his uh, Instagram in the show notes. And uh, if you are a subscriber to the Knife Junkie newsletter, you've uh, already got a chance to uh, see a picture of that because we included a picture uh, in one of Bob's recent uh, newsletters. We'll tr I'll try to remember to put a picture uh, in the show notes page as well. All right. Uh, I'm assuming uh, while you're on the topic of getting work done by uh, by uh, folks that you want to talk about some work that uh, Jared Neve of Neve's Knives did for you. Yes. OK. So I can tell now just in looking at these show notes and others in the recent past, I'm going into a phase, Jim, where, where I've 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 gotten quite a nice collection. And now, you know, occasionally I get rid of one. But really, it's about refining the collection and getting handles and little things that I like done 
done. And one of those things is sharpening. Mm. And, uh, you know, we have some good friends of the show uh, who are into sharpening. And uh, w- one of them is Jared Neve of Neve's Knives. And uh, he's does this beautiful freehand sharpening. He he did uh, he did a job on on my uh, on my Emerson um, sax. He did a little tip fix, and then I of course dropped my uh, my M- uh, my XM eighteen Warncliffe on the kitchen floor and damaged the beautiful tip. I sent this to him, and uh, he not only put a razor's edge on it, but he fixed the tip of this knife. Careful, this is in. You're getting under trademark <laughs> terms there. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, he made it super sharp, but he made this tip incredible, almost better than, uh, I mean, it, it looks better than how it shipped to me. And this is M390 and he did it by hand on stone, mm. which to me is just very impressive. He keeps a consistent angle by guiding his, uh, guiding his hand with his finger against the stone. He's got a, he's got a real cool sort of old school way of doing it. Mm-hmm. And man, it really shows, uh, so I think I mean I, I don't mean to be uh, advertising for Jared because I don't know what his capacity is, but I would seek him out if you have uh, if you have knife issues because the man can sharpen a knife. Right. So right. You know. Well, speaking of sharpening, uh, another uh, good new 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 good friend of the show, Mike Emler, yep. uh, has yep. uh, come on uh, uh, some of the Thursday night knives before. We've also had him on a recent podcast, but uh, also uh, we've got some. Uh, work being done or have have been done by him yeah yeah so uh mike emler uh you know him from uh not only does he offer his special sharpening services for ferrum forge uh for their uh their uh, custom knives he uh also has a sharpening service called crazy sharp and and a very uh opinionated knife man uh people know him from his youtube channel and he you know he will go on and uh you know, talk unabashedly about knives that oftentimes people love and what their issues are from his perspective. So uh, he can be a bit of a polarizing figure, and we love that, of course. Uh, but but what we really love is his knowledge and his ability. So I sent him my um, Spidey Chef, and and uh, we had a conversation about this on Thursday Night Knives. He hates the Spidey Chef, thinks it's a terrible knife, thinks it's ugly. So I sent it to him to get reprofiled. I've I've always wanted my spidey chef to have a pointier point so he's going to do that but he's also giving it giving it his world-class sharpening job which is always also done by hand on stones uh incidentally jared neve uh, learned a lot from emler uh, but he's going to give me that sharpening job and this cool finish that he does that's uh it's 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 like this blasted then tumbled for 24 hours sort of mirror uh acid finish it's Right. Gorgeous. It kind of looks like gunmetal. Yeah, you talked so, about it yeah. on, on last week's Thursday Night Knives. It sounded like a uh, tremendously long process. Yeah, he said he puts it in the tumbler with this uh, uh, medium, that, that ceramic medium, I believe it is. But they look like little uh, you know, jimmies or sprinkles for your ice cream. And, uh, you know, sitting in there shimmering for 24 hours or uh, getting tumbled with that right. gives it this incredible look. So. I'm just getting into having having things done to these knives that I have to make them my own and and optimal and better and uh, yeah. So uh, this is uh, all a part of it. Yeah. All right. Well, of course we know uh, Mike Emler is uh, open for business for sharpening, so uh, you can find uh, where to find him on the knifejunkie dot com slash one twenty four. That was the uh, podcast we did with uh, Mike Emler. So you can go to the knifejunkie.com slash 124, hear that interview. Also uh, find links to uh, Mike on social media, YouTube, all that kind of good stuff. All right. So a lot of uh, knife sharpening talk and uh, knives being kind of redone to make them even better or more uh, personalized for the knife Mm -hmm. junkie. But that doesn't mean the desire for new knives has gone away because what, what is this, Bob, here in the notes that says, you want a new, I'm going to say it both ways, buoy or Bowie. You want a new Bowie. Well, you're from North Carolina, Jim. You should say buoy. I'm from Ohio. I'm going to say Bowie. Okay. <laughs> buoy then. Yeah. So, uh, yes, I've been, I've been wanting a new Bowie recently. Something very robust because I, I got a little bit of a disappointment. Now, this is, this is going to sound crazy. I love my, uh, my Cold Steel Vaquero Bowie. I have for a long, long time. I love it. But I, I recently got curious as to what the tang looked like. 
And uh, so I did a quick search on YouTube and someone once cracked theirs open because they wanted to replace it with um, with uh, uh, an antler, a uh, stag antler, and discovered that it's actually not a full tang, you know, uh, that goes all the way through. Uh, if you look at the pommel, it looks like you're looking at the nut screwed onto the back of the tang that's been polished down. Hmm. But really what you're looking at is that a nut that is screwed onto a, a bit of threaded steel, but then connecting that bit of threaded steel to the rat tail tang at the end of the blade is a cable that's been soldered on, hmm. which is just the weirdest damn thing. I don't know what, um, you know, and cold steel, I'm not here to say that they're not really damn strong knives, but something about that is just weird to me. And so somehow that worked its way into my, into my thinking and, and that relegated the Vaquero strictly to a fighting bow. So if 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 I get in a duel, you know, I'll use that. Okay. Uh, but if but if I'm going to be splitting wood or you know batoning wood for the for the old family fire pit, I'm not going to be using that because something in my mind is going to say I don't know about that about that rat rat tail tang with the cable to the to the to the nut on the end and. You know, my faux Coca-Bolo handle is splitting anyway. So, yes, this is my long way of saying I'd like to get another Bowie knife. And I was looking at the Condor, um, what do they call it? Coffin uh, Deathbringer. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> the Condor. It's it's pretty menacing. Uh, it's their new one. And I can't believe it's it's slipping my mind. It came out last year. It's this big, giant Bowie with a with a nice coffin-shaped handle. And uh, it looks great, but I've I've heard some mixed reviews about it. And uh, so now I'm just putting it out there. I want a robust, really awesome Bowie knife. Um, I don't want to spend too much money, and uh, and I don't want it to be so fine that I won't want to use it. Like I would love to get a giant Randall Bowie knife, but I know it would, you know, stay under glass for the rest of its life. So if anyone out there has a good suggestion, I'm taking it. Uh, uh, tops, you know, I have enough Tops knives right now. Not that I have enough. You never have enough. But I'm not looking for another Tops Bowie. Uh, so you can you can knock that off your list and cold steel right now you can knock that off your list just because I need to look further afield you know you know the little nut and the the wire and all that kind of thing <laughs> I, I just don't get it man I don't get what that was about so I don't know maybe maybe it was a solution to a problem at the time and uh, that's just maybe they don't do it like that anymore I don't know maybe if Lynn Thompson would would come on the Knife Junkie podcast like he said he might. You could ask him to talk about it, man. I wouldn't ask him that. Well, maybe I would. Maybe you should. Maybe I should. If you have a uh, a suggestion for Bob's new buoy or Bowie, give him a call at uh, 724-466-4487. The Knife Junkies listener line, 724-466-4487. Uh, maybe also justify why you're um, providing that uh, buoy or Bowie that Bob should get. We'd love to... Uh, Play your comment here on an upcoming podcast so that uh, yeah. your opinion or your uh, your stance is out there so everybody else can hear it. Or if you feel more comfortable, you can just shoot Bob an email at bob at the knife and uh, let him know which buoy or bowie that he should get. And uh, while you're at it, tell us which way you say it, buoy or bowie. <laughs> I like uh, I forget who it was the other day said uh, pronounces it buoy because of the singer David Bowie. That way you can keep them separate. Right, I think I think that was uh, I think that was Anthony uh, from uh, Everyday said, yeah, every day Commentary. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. So one other knife suggestion I need, and I will take Cold Steel uh, suggestions oh. in this case. Well, okay. <laughs> well, because, <laughs> because you know, is uh, I need some throwing knives. I, I have a couple of Sogs, uh, three Sogs that uh, my my brother brother in law got me, and. Uh, I've been winging them at my awesome target and they, man, they just, it's gotta be me. But I also kind of think these knives might not be the greatest. So if anyone has a good suggestion for good starter, uh, throwing knives, I kind of feel like I need something heavy. These knives, you know, are kind of a Walmart purchase and they, they, they they're, they're short and kind of light and they have, uh, they have a 550 cord on them. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Uh, with a little tassel on the end. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I don't know anything about throwing knives. So if anyone has any suggestions, uh, let me know. Definitely don't want to break the bank. And I would like to get at least three so I'm not walking back and forth. To the, to the <laughs> that's a good <laughs> form of exercise. Throw, walk, yeah. and go get it. Most of the, most of the time they bounce back. 
If it was me, throw, go walk, and pick it up off the ground. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say, most of the time they bounce back at me anyway. Right. I don't have to walk too far. Right. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm interested. You know what? Uh, sounds like a, yeah, I just popped in my mind, maybe a Thursday Night Knives. If we've got some uh, knife-throwing experts out there, maybe we could have a uh, knife-throwing you know show on uh, Thursday Night uh, Knives and talk yeah. about knife-throwing or axe-throwing or whatever. Come to think of it, there are some people I, I – there's one – young woman i follow on instagram she's actually from our great state of virginia a throw flip stick i think is her she goes Mm. by and she she's got a big target she throws everything and just chunk 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 yeah it's cool not something you expect from a to see from a a, a young young woman yeah cool uh cool ig handle though too throw uh, throw throw flip stick yeah i like that cool all right so if you have any uh, suggestions for Bob as he's getting into uh, chunking some knives and axes, not at his family, but as his target, uh, oh, give, us a, give us a call or uh, shoot Bob an email again, 724-466-4487 or bob at com. And uh, if you also have suggestions about uh, who would be good for him to have on Thursday Night Knives, uh, you know, the beauty of Thursday Night Knives, it's video. We can show off knives and axes and those kind of things, targets. But we can also have multiple people on at the same time. So if you have some suggestions about guests, uh, again, call Bob or shoot him an email. And uh, just as an update, Jim, before before we wrap this up, I wanted to let you know I, I did finally get my new slingshot. Oh, yeah. It is cool. And, and now I don't have it right in front of me, and I don't remember the brand. But uh, uh, you can buy – we'll talk about this on another show. Uh, but it's been really fun and uh, – uh, I, I want to get good at throwing knives, axes, slingshot, anything, anything to help stave off these damn chipmunks, Jim. They're destroying my yard. Mm-hmm. And if I can start winging knives, maybe they'll tell their friends. <coughs> and, uh, you know, he's getting he's getting better and better. Let's go. This old man is getting crazy. Right. Let's and go. Let's go, go to the next door. Neighbor. <laughs> yeah. Everything's caving in on me. Yeah. <laughs> Do you carry multiple knives, then overthink which one to use when an actual cutting chore pops up? You're a knife junkie of the first order. All right. Hopefully the uh, chipmunks go away from your house, but uh, don't come too far this way to my house. Yes, Jim. I I (laughs) think think we're safe. We live in different (laughs) cities, so I think we're good. So anyway. Uh, my problem is squirrels, even though when we you know, get rid of them, there's always their cousins or brothers that, that come back and try to get in the attic. So those damn squirrels. All right. Thursday Night Knives. We've mentioned it. Show coming up tomorrow. If you're listening to this when it uh, comes out, if you are a Patreon member, patron, uh, you, of course, have access to the show early, a day early. So, uh, again, Thursday Night Knives is coming out on Thursdays live at 10 p.m. on the YouTube channel and on the Facebook page. Uh, so be sure to uh, watch that. Not quite sure what our show topic will be tomorrow night, but always a fun one. And then, of course, next week's guest on the interview show podcast, Bob, is going to be Jimmy Slash, YouTube's Jimmy Slash. That's coming up uh, this, summer, this Sunday. Yeah, Jimmy Slash, uh, a YouTuber I've been following for a few years. He just, I don't know, always fills me with good feelings. Plus, he loves the big cold steel knives. He's just a, he's a very positive force. And uh, I was really happy to meet him and talk with him. Yeah. And uh, maybe shouldn't let the cat out of the bag or maybe shouldn't say this, but uh, you are working with him to maybe try to do something uh, just on cold steel, uh, since both of you kind of have uh, good collections of cold steel knives. Yeah, that's right. I don't mean to be presumptuous, but he said he was going to send me a uh, a cold steel uh, Formax Scout. And uh, so when that comes, I want to check it out and get him back on uh, – on camera here, you know, on, on, not here, but on YouTube and, uh, talk to him for maybe 20 minutes, half hour about the large cold steels and tell him my impression of the Formax. He's a huge Formax fan. He's got a, 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 a deep and wide collection of Formaxes, which is cool, mm. uh, in and of itself. So, uh, when I said I had never held one, he's like, give me your address. Like he was ready to like, he was ready to drive it out here. He's like, you need one. <laughs> so uh, I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, it'd be cool to do more of those little, uh, do a couple of quick, yeah. quick chats yeah. and get them up, you know. Well, we'll work on that and some others. So uh, stay tuned to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. If you're not yet subscribed, you can go to thenifejunkie.com slash YT subscribe, and that'll get you subscribed to the YouTube channel. 
or just go to thenifejunkie.com slash subscribe and you can find links to subscribe to the newsletter as well as this podcast and then also to the YouTube channel. We definitely want you being a part of the Knife Junkie community. Bob, as we're wrapping it up, any final thoughts, any final words on this uh, midweek supplemental here as we uh, kind of are, are midweek into another week of shows and preparing for Thursday Night Knives tomorrow? Just it, It's like never ending, man. I know. I know it is. It's a, it, it shocks me each week how there's, there's always someone to talk to and there's always something interesting either happening in the knife world or something new coming out or, or some video or something that someone has made an article that's been written that, uh, it's amazing. It's a, it's a, it's a snowballing community. Yeah. It just keeps kind of getting bigger and, right. and, uh, gathering momentum. Well, if you, uh, again, would like to uh, be a part of any of the, the, uh, Thursday night knives or have inter or, uh, have, uh, uh, guest that you think would be interesting for the podcast or whatever, shoot Bob an email at bob at com or call the listener line 724-466-4487. Again, we uh, just want to be a resource for knife knowledge here in the knife community and uh, want everybody to be involved. So we appreciate you, uh, you being here. We appreciate you listening. If you found value in this podcast, the interview podcast, or Thursday Night Knives, we would love for you to do us a favor and share this with your community on social media, be it a post, a link, a photograph, whatever. Uh, just uh, share the Knife Junkie podcast and Thursday Night Knives and uh, help us uh, reach more folks in the knife community with this great content that Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco is putting out. So on behalf of the Knife Junkie, I'm Jim the Knife Newbie over here, Jim Person. Thank you for joining us on the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode number 133. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.